Foundation. We have uh, Ms. Rama Ayer, Director General, WBP India Foundation. Foundation. And uh, Professor Preeti Rao, Department of Electrical Engineering, IIT Bombay. These uh, two ladies will be talking about Voice for Social Good with Happy Lingo. It's going to be a fantastic session for sure. I'll hand it over to Ms. Ayer. Thank you, Ravi. Um, so we're here to look at how our voice can really um, help uh, be used for social good um, and introduce you to our app, which is called Happy Lingo. Um, it has been developed by IIT Bombay in collaboration with uh, the Tata Institute uh, for uh, Technical Design and the WPP India Foundation. Could I just request you to have the slides up, please? Just want to quickly walk you through the work that we do the WPP India Foundation. We work with the underserved youth of India to lead them all the way from educational outcomes to improved livelihood choices. Uh, our model is quite deep. We work with the same child for a period of seven years, all the way from the time that they're 11 years old till the time that they're about 18 years old. And in this time, we work with them across three big challenges. One is how do we improve the school educational outcomes? The second one is how do we skill them and make them livelihood ready? And the third thing is we know that all this will not be possible unless we address the deep-rooted social norms. Our model is to develop proof of concept so that we can scale them with our partners, with our clients, and across geographies. In doing all this, we do take a huge digital leap in two ways. One is in the fact that our children are digitally literate, uh, and they learn coding, they learn robotics, they learn uh, 3D design. But more importantly, in the way that we scale, which is also digitally, uh, and we also look at impact. We spend disproportionately look at impact assessment. Our work is evidence-based, both in terms of decision-making, as well as in terms of the work that we actually do on ground. Uh, next, please. Across the 23 interventions that we work in, uh, in fact, like I mentioned, our, our kids learn a lot of 21st century skills. But one of the things that we have found which is most aspirational for them is spoken English and reading English. Uh, if you look at some of the challenges that we're dealing with out here, it's at two levels. One is grade appropriate reading. So typically a fifth grade student today is reading at a second grade level. And the second area is in dropouts. So one out of four children leave school in the eighth grade without having the basic reading skills. Uh, the, this is an all India figure. If you look at the communities that we work with, these data points are even harsher. Uh, next, please. So the question that we're all asking ourselves and for any of us who have kids, I think we know that you know that the biggest challenge is are kids still reading and more importantly, are they getting any better at it and are they getting more efficient at it? Uh, next, please. So we've looked at it at two levels. If you look at the government uh, data, which is uh, out from the NEP 2020, uh, which talks about the huge challenge that we have ahead of us, we could also look at it as a business potential. But there are five crore children who have not yet attained the basic foundation literacy, and this is becoming a huge priority in India. Uh, it's actually a challenge with all of us in the ecosystem, whether it's the policymakers, whether it's the teachers and the trainers, uh, whether it's the civil society or even corporates like us. Uh, next, please. Uh, and I think for all of us on ground, uh, one of the other challenges that we're dealing with is the actual implementation challenge. Uh, do we? do the assessment in class or do we do it digitally? If you look at any of the classroom interventions on assessment, it is cumbersome. It takes anywhere from about two to three months to assess an entire school. Uh, it is also not standardized. And uh, most importantly, it's not enjoyable for the kids. Uh, next, please. To address a lot of these challenges, we're very happy to introduce our app, Happy Lingo. Uh, it has been designed by the R&D uh, division of IIT Bombay, uh, which has been led by Professor Rao. Uh, in collaboration with the Tata Center for Technology and Design and the WPP India Foundation. Uh, to talk you more about the app and what it does and how it works, I'm going to hand over to Professor Rao. Professor? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Rama, for setting that context. Uh, uh, so what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, I'll give you a kind of a de description and outline the main features of the app and then talk about more, uh, uh, you know, about how we see and, uh, you know, where it's going. Uh, can I have the next slide? Okay, so to describe the app, so we have a, a front end that's actually the part that facilitates uh, the assessment itself uh, by presenting text, first of all, allowing the user to select uh, the content uh, for the current assessment and then uh, you know, presenting the text and recording uh, the oral reading uh, you know, of the child. 
uh, at the back end, we have, you know, essentially what has been talked about a lot in this conference, the AI ML voice, uh, you know, processing uh, technology uh, that evaluates the recordings on uh, models that we built, uh, which actually uh, implement established uh, reading rubrics uh, and prepares a report. Uh, eventually, we have a dashboard that can display these reports and the reports revolve around these reading attributes that I just mentioned, such as accuracy, fluency, uh, expressiveness and confidence are uh, all analyzed from the recording. And this can be done at multiple levels for a whole cohort or for an individual child across time and so on. Uh, so to give you an example, uh, you know, just to illustrate, you know, how exactly it's used and in what kinds of uh, setting, can we just move to the next slide? Okay, so this is a pilot we carried out in a school in Northern uh, Karnataka. Uh, so if you just play the video, we'll see how this child engages with the app. There's a story being presented on the screen in the form of text and the child is reading it out. The recording is getting made in the process and that's going to be available for analysis at the back end. So can you please play uh, the uh, video? Trolls are sharp and stiff. Children don't like me. The next morning when that little tree woke, woke up, it had big leaves, just like, like the mango trees. Now I am happy, said the bubbly trees. Tree, but a grape come along and tee up all the leaves. Oh dear, said the bubbly tree, I wish I had gold leaves. Gods do it. Do not eat gold. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Can we move to the next slide? Uh, so as you saw, yeah, so as you saw, there is a number of, uh, you know, comments and feedback uh, that's possible on listening to this child read. Uh, so what our, uh, you know, product does is essentially achieve all this automatically. Uh, so, for example, some of the analytics that we produce are, uh, you know, the distribution of these reading scores or reading skill on specific attributes like you see here, uh, you know, across, let's say, a whole class or, uh, you know, a particular section in the school. Uh, we also have these individual tracking uh, mechanisms. So, on the far right, you see two plots on top, uh, which show how a child progresses across time over the course of months when these assessments are repeated. Uh, with reference to the class uh, performance. So we see there's a large gap between this individual child and the class performance at the beginning, but the gap gradually narrows. So it's an example of some of the insights we get. And finally, we have a pie chart there below, which is kind of you know capturing very representational uh, data uh, about assuming that we have benchmarks in place about uh, you know a snapshot of the performance across a very large cohort uh, at any given time. And uh, this is something we've been testing in urban, peri-urban, and rural Indian, uh, rural India schools. Uh, and uh, we find that in each, uh, you know, setting, uh, we do get something which administrators uh, and education providers uh, consider very valuable. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, here is a case of, uh, you know, uh, obviously, since we are doing this uh, digitally, we have access to a lot of byproducts of the analysis. And this is just an example of where we might be looking for uh, at, uh, let's say, the you at vocabulary and uh, familiarity uh, and fluency with a certain vocabulary. So this just shows, for example, that in different settings, such as rural and urban schools, there are different words that trip uh, students up. Uh, and this, for example, might be very valuable to someone who is designing the content or planning some kind of particular, you know, education uh, intervention. Now, next, please. Okay, so uh, to, you know, kind of summarize uh, some of the main, uh, you know, uh, kind of advantages of uh, this kind of digital assessment. Uh, of course, it's very clear that it's objective uh, because it's essentially based on computation and the computation itself has been trained, uh, you know, on a large amount of field data. Uh, it's reliable in the sense it's repeatable, consistent. It's like any time testing uh, that's available and it's extremely consistent, of course, being digital and, you know, having this program in place and not depending on the availability, let's say, of teachers or evaluators and so on. Uh, it's scalable because it's digital. 
uh, enjoyable. That was a really big part of the design to make it kind of fun and engaging, uh, you know, for the children uh, to uh, who are actually, uh, you know, being assessed, but all the same, uh, you know, liking the experience. That was a very important consideration uh, in the design itself. Uh, so it's a comprehensive tool for spoken language, uh, especially at this point for oral reading, uh, which provides real time data. Uh, so we have a lot of data available and that can really be customized to the particular needs uh, you know, of the uh, you know, context and setting in which the impact assessment is being carried out. Uh, can we go to the next slide? So our roadmap going forward, uh, so we've done uh, some testing over the past several months, is to build the app to assess students uh, uh, you know, in, in order to increase its scope to more languages. In particular, we are looking at Hindi uh, next. Uh, and to scale the app, uh, you know, across India uh, in terms of, you know, trying to pilot at more schools in India. Uh, and of course, finally, there's nothing really stopping us from going to schools in emerging markets and places where very similar literacy challenges exist. Uh, finally, uh, Happy Lingo, which is what the app is named, has a potential to work with any existing technology to reach general users who want to build their language skills. Uh, so I'd like to close on that note, uh, you know, with what we are looking forward to do uh, and hand it over to uh, Rama. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Uh, I did notice there's a question in the Q&A, uh, Professor. I think you might want to take it. Um, we're quite happy. Uh, uh, or maybe I can look at it. In case we run out of time. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, should I answer that question? Yes, it asks about whether there are other available or uh, similar apps. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I think just to give you a perspective, uh, you know, this is part of a research project we did, and it happens to be a very active area of research, this whole, uh, you know, idea of assessing a spoken language where you're trying to, uh, you know, listen critically to uh, the way uh, language is being used, in this case, uh, reading for, let's say, uh, you know, the accent, the, the fluency, and so on. So this is an area of research uh, that uh, that's something that we see a lot in, uh, you know, speech conferences. Uh, as for off-the-shelf solutions, uh, no, there are none. But like you know, our previous panelists mentioned, you know, we have some of the framework and the machinery that's already been built by the likes of you know Google and uh, Amazon and so on in terms of speech recognition engines. Uh, but it does require a lot of customization for this application because we need access to a lot of parameters other than just the words being spoken. So, for example, we are analyzing a lot more parameters for fluency and expressiveness. Uh, apart from the fact that we need, uh, you know, certain other, you know, uh, information uh, that's extracted, but that's not directly available from these engines. Uh, so that's the reason why we do not probably have already, uh, you know, products that we can just pick and use uh, for this application. Thank you. For any of you who have any other um, comments or discussions, we're very happy to connect with you uh, offline. Thank you. Thanks, Ravi. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much, uh, Ms. Ramayar, and of course, Professor Preeti Rao for being uh, with us. Thank you.